tuning in to the World XP Podcast. If you're enjoying the content, please remember to drop a sub, drop a like, and leave your thoughts down below in the comments. With that, we will see you guys in the podcast. Chris, you're back. Welcome again. for the. Thank you. I don't even know. What is it? Fifth, fourth time? Fifth time. Fourth. Yeah, that works. Sure. It's four and a half. Something like that. I don't know. I'm starting to like these very informal intros. They're more fun than <laughs> just yelling out welcome. That's so fair. Like, I have to do that with people that like I don't know and make it feel like official, but this is really not official at all. I'm sitting in a place undisclosed location <laughs> with a bunker a, with a four yeah doomsday bunker with 1800 cans of bush baked beans and a 40 dollar amazon microphone calling myself a podcaster yeah. <laughs> you, just need, you need a you know a flashy name some kind of pirate radio thing and then you'll be good mm, pirate radio i mean i like what you've got okay. now yeah but, you know. i'll well yeah but then i have to like I don't know. Then the algorithm would change. Like when you take a break, when I took a break um, last fall and I didn't post anything for a little while because we had like some editing stuff to go weird and like technical stuff and whatever. And then I was out of town and doing other things and some guests like said they would come on and then they didn't come on. My numbers were like pretty like decent relative to me. Mm-hmm. like more than 10 <laughs> <laughs> and then when i started posting again they were in the single digits for a while huh and you have to like have momentum i guess i don't know it's very odd so they're starting to go up up again like i've had a couple hit in the 90s 80s and 90s like on youtube yeah um and so it was going like i had a couple in like the hundreds at the beginning and mm-hmm. then just and it was like four I was like, oh, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're back up. Like even the ones that, like, I don't know. I never know which ones are going to do well. Yeah. Like ever. And then I tried to get on, like I've got, I actually got on a schedule and I go every Monday at eight, unless it's a holiday and then go at nine because people like, sleep in or whatever. Yeah. Like 8 a.m. And I do the little premiere thing where it does the two minute countdown and uh you know the whole thing and i got the clips coming out on tuesday from that one and then yeah. the soccer stuff coming out every friday i'm gonna try to add some other stuff in there but like i don't know it's weird youtube is weird i don't understand it like i had a real exact same hashtags from the same practice just a very different variation of the same drill posted the exact same time just one week apart friday to friday mm-hmm. one had like 6,000 views and 300 some likes. And the other one had like a thousand views. And I was like, well, how does that even make sense? Yeah. (laughs) It doesn't make sense. And then that one, the one that did bad on Instagram, did really well on YouTube, got like four and a half thousand views on YouTube. And then the one with 6,000 views on Instagram only got like two on YouTube. I was like, I've heard that before though, that the, like they don't, Things that do well on one platform tend not to translate. I don't know yeah. why, but I don't know. And then people are telling me I should do TikTok, and I was like, I could like, I could post there, mm-hmm. and it would basically just be a repost of the reel and the short YouTube shorts. But also, I feel like if I had TikTok, I would waste a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> so, was, yeah. So I don't know. I've I've held out for a while, to be honest. Since it came, I still don't have one. Yeah, I feel very proud of myself for doing that. I don't feel like <laughs> caving anytime soon. So I'll go on other social media, scroll for about 30 seconds, see something, get irritated. And instead of continuing to scroll and getting more irritated, I just leave it now. <laughs> so I feel like it's good. I've that noticed good. that. I've noticed that about a lot of social media people that like people that do things like this or like they have uh, like they're trying to produce music or like their own content that they only go on to post, see what other people are doing in their like field, like in their subject area or whatever of content. And that that's it. They don't actually spend any time on it. Yeah. Which I found I like, it makes sense. Yeah. But also is interesting. I don't know. Well, it is. I mean, I, I think it, it's interesting to watch what people do. You know, like you said, like the people who are creating the content, 
right? Versus kind of the people consuming the content and yeah. not to, to insult whoever's listening to this, but it, you know, like it's an interesting. No, please continue to listen. <laughs> please continue. Um, but I, if, you know, have you ever noticed like that impulse to, let's say, you know, like you're sitting at a, you know, you're sitting at a family event. It's getting kind of boring. You feel that impulse to reach for your phone, but you don't I've even know what you're going I've for. I've never done that. I socialize very well with all of my family members. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've never this... once done that in my life. <laughs> it's fair. But <laughs> if I had, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, in theory, right? Totally hypothetically. <laughs> um, but like, you know, people do it, right? Like, so you reach in your, your pocket, you pull out your phone. And if you did that with a book, everybody would go, what are you doing? Like you pull out a book, you're like, I'm just going to read like a chapter here. Like, I know you guys are talking, but like, I'm just going to read a chapter here. Everybody would go, what are you doing? That but would like, be more productive with your time also. Yeah. But like, I realized it's a- uh, Five bucks if you try it. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> at, at my wedding, you can try it. Okay. I'll, t- I'll take that as permission. It's, it's yeah. recorded. So. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I mean like I'll, you... I'll edit this part out and then I'll say it never happened. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But I think, you know, when people do it on a phone, I think they don't realize that, like, I mean, they've effectively gone and taken a smoke break, yeah. right? Like, you're like, oh, it's whatever. It's inappropriate timing. I'm here with my family, but, like, I'm kind of stressed out and bored, so I'm going to reach for my addictive behavior, right? Mm. right? Like, it's whatever, like, it's it's an addiction, right? Like, yeah. you, you don't even know you're reaching for your phone. You just feel that urge to reach in your pocket, or maybe it's just me, but I feel no, like an yeah. urge to reach into my pocket and grab it, even though... I don't know what I'm going to look at. I just looked at it five minutes ago. There's nothing good. I know that, right? I know objectively yeah. nothing new is there. It's like when you go into the fridge and yeah. then you go back five minutes later. But like with your phone, there might be something there. Whereas mm-hmm. with the fridge, like you know there's not something there. But people still do it with the fridge. You yeah. You know there's nothing there. And then you yeah. get, and then you get kind of. I don't know if you've done this with the fridge, but like you go in, if you're hungry, you go in there like two or three times, and you've come up with nothing. Like the fourth time, you'll put some random combination of things together <laughs> that were never supposed to go together at all. Yep. Yeah, the my dad used just... to do that. He would put frozen vegetables with a chunk of cheddar cheese and just throw salsa on it and call it a meal. And I was like, "This is not a thing. You should stop doing this, Dad. It's not good at all." He's like, "But I got all." He's like, "I got all the food groups." It's like, no, no, you actually don't. But still, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I feel it sometimes. It depends on where I am and what I'm doing, as to like how hard I'll try to like fight it. Mm-hmm. I, if I'm at a family gathering, I will try very hard to fight it. Sure, I will yeah. never take it out. Of course. But if never. I'm like, let's see what, in a situation that, you know, I don't feel as obliged to be paying attention, insert whatever the first thing that whoever's listening thought of that situation, you're a horrible person. <laughs> that one yeah <laughs> i'll take it out so i i don't know yes yeah, it's, it's just become like habit part of our lives and i don't know and like there's an argument to be made for like for example sometimes if i'm not at the house and i'm coming back and like jenna's at work for instance i'll be like hey yeah. did you did you feed the dog and like if i don't get a response like i don't want to not feed him because like then he doesn't get food but i don't want to overfeed him either because then he'll just throw up yep. and neither of those is like hey please respond so like at that it's it's weird it's like a blessing and a curse which is what i don't know all, all of it is really yeah yeah i think i mean i i think it's it's definitely got positives to it as well yeah. but i do i do think it's interesting to watch watch things sort of like algorithms start to sort of hack biology yeah, it's, I don't like it. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. I don't, I don't like it. You know, um, Ari Shafir, do you know who that is? He's a comedian. Yeah. Um, Rogan talks about the experiment that he did all the time where he would only look up puppy videos and then YouTube would only suggest puppy videos to him, like none <laughs> of the other stuff. Yeah. I did that for a while. I only listened to Spanish stuff and then my ads were in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it like converted on you. 
Yeah, anecdotal. I was like, yes, I'm not one of the whites. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Don't cancel me, please. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't know. Social media is very interesting. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of good. Like, you you keep up with people that you weren't meant to keep up with because you follow them or you're friends with them on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. Or, like then it's the same all the bad stuff that everyone talks about it's odd i don't really know because i think if you curate the people that you follow and the ones that follow you like those um you remember when finsta was a thing for like a year it was like people that would have their normal instagram and then they'd make like a private one and only follow like super close friends yeah and then Instagram got rid of that by making a close friends list, which was yeah. like kind of shady, but also like I don't know, it's like the it functions similarly. But like if you curate it to be that, then I think it's like it's a good thing. What you don't want is all the bots coming in. Like I think I told you this stat yeah. before. It was like nineteen of the top twenty Christian pages on Facebook were run by Russian troll farms in like Macedonia or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's the stuff you don't need. Yeah. So it's like if you're smart about it, you curate it. Like I don't let people follow me that I don't know who they are. Yeah. I don't follow them unless it's like unless I know them or it's like a. They don't even have to have the check, but like on Instagram, if they're like a fitness page or a soccer training page, I'll follow them or Mm -hmm. something like that. And then people that I know that are trying to like make it in content that aren't verified yet. I like those are those ones, but like I know them or I know them through somebody yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the, that's it. Other than that, I keep it to like a minimum. It's like, yeah, because it's not like I don't care most of the time. Like, <laughs> like, like what half these people are doing. I just, I just don't like yeah. I go look through a handful of people's stories that I know and I care how they're doing. And then the other people that are there, like, I don't know, it's just like, you live in insert place that's far away. It's like, I'm not going to go see you anytime soon. Like, uh, yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I, I occasionally find personalities I like, but they tend to all be in the comedy realm, right? Like I, I like somebody's shorts or their. That's fair. You yeah. know, and I, I don't know them and I'm probably never going to meet them, but I enjoy their brand of comedy. Now, that being said, they all tend to like, they do tend to pick a thing and then stick to it. Yeah. Which. Uh, is okay but at some point you're like oh it's the guy who makes that joke but like yeah. it's, oh okay it's that joke today they build okay. their niche audience and then they like because there's different ways to build the audiences on socials it's like you can either go really niche like what tim did with his stormbound stuff mm-hmm. shout out popular you go go check his channel out on youtube he doesn't do storm he doesn't do stormbound anymore but that's how he built his sub base yeah. the subscriber base he did one small game that there was like only three content creators on also yeah. did you know that the ceos of those companies like gave him they he was like corresponding with them the people that made the game when he That's was like I, when he was like 17 yeah i only i heard it on your last podcast yeah i meant to ask you about it i was like i had no idea <laughs> yeah dude he was doing big things when he was in high school yeah but like he doesn't tell anyone anything. So my parents were like, "What are you doing, playing video games all the time?" It's like I'm making money. It's like they're like, "No, you're not." It's like, "Yeah, he is." <laughs> like you want to see the email? It's like you don't correspond with the CEO of some video game company if you're not like. But the reason he could do that is because there was like four content creators for that game. It was a very small game. It was like a Yu-Gi-Oh type trading card like fighting ish game. Okay. But like with yeah. other monsters. Yeah, And so they'd give him access to like the new decks before they came out and like they'd give him new access to like or like free coins to open packs and like things like that so he could do like pack opening videos and like oh this is my review on the dragon deck or whatever. Yeah. And he was he was doing it. And so like yeah. that's the, those comedy people that make the one joke. It's like that's what they're doing. They're finding their very small niche and then like hoping to grow off that and like he doesn't he does other stuff now like he was streaming like those old Ninja Turtle games and Super Mario Strikers and like all those different things. So nice. he's expanded a bit, but like, yeah. yeah. No, it's great. And I, I mean, for those companies, right. It's, it's probably cheaper than an advertising budget and it reaches oh, it has to be, has right. To be and, and it's targeted, right. Like the people watching those videos like the game. 
Yeah, it's right? more like, targeted it's, than, like, it's almost more targeted than, like, the, the algorithm ads because the algorithm ads, people ignore them for the most part. Yeah. But if you're actively on the game and you're actively watching, like, seeking out somebody who's doing that, then it's yeah. like they're actually going to pay attention for the most part. So, yeah, it's a good, like, it's a good thing. So if anyone wants me to advertise something targeted. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I don't know. I have no targeted thing because all of my episodes are completely different. So that's be entirely unhelpful. Unless they want to <laughs> advertise, like, cheap microphones, then maybe I could do that. But like, There you go. There you yeah, go. I don't know. Speaking of cheap and money the thing that we are meant to be talking about 20 minutes ago <laughs> it's organic yeah we're getting we're getting there so we were talking beforehand it's like everyone told us to have a savings account when we were little and i never got one because it didn't make any sense to me but also yeah so yeah. like you had you had thought this was this was something that you have brought up. So if you have a spiel, yeah. go for the spiel. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's I I remember as a kid, right? Like my parents really pushed bank accounts and saving, and um, and that's all well and good. But now as an adult, I've always sort of wondered, like if you sit down and do the math, right? And it's you know it it reflects current events with inflation, right? Like let's say you take your money and you throw it in a bank account. And I mean, what's a CD get you these days? One of those certificates of deposit, right? Like no half a percent, maybe a quarter percent. I haven't bothered to check, to be honest. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's so negligible that it's not even worth considering, right? Like how much money you're going to get out of it because the answer is basically none. Um, so why would you put your money in a bank account? Why do they exist? Do you know why they exist? I always wondered that like when I would go, when I was going through, when I was first opening bank accounts and doing different things and like looking through like what each thing did. Yeah. I was like, why would anyone do that? I didn't what, make have any. A, have a bank? Like, this, no, the CD, like the, oh. those sorts of accounts. It's like, why yeah. would anyone put their money there? Like that makes no sense. Why wouldn't you just do anything else with it? Yeah. So the, the advantage of the CD is it's a guaranteed return, right? Oh. So it's, it's kind of like a bond, right? Like it's, you give your money to the bank they agree they're going to pay you whatever percent, roughly, you know, half a percent, but they'll pay you that half a percent no matter what, right? Market goes up, market goes down, you'll get half a percent. Yeah. Um, so it's not a bad one for money that you can't lose. You know, like there's, there's, I, I guess, you know, um, there's a couple different pots of money anybody should have. There's the, like, the money you need, then, like, that should be in a bank account because you need it to be there, right? Like, yeah. There's money that you don't need, but you can't lose. That would be stuff you'd put in like a CD, right? Like it's, you know, mm -hmm. you're not going to use it your day-to-day -day expenses. If you really needed it, you could get it back on a penalty, but you won't lose it. And then there's money that you can lose and that, that money should be invested in something, right? That's yeah. like, that's, but even to like keep up with inflation, right? I mean, if money in your bank account is worth less this, you know, I put a hundred dollars in the bank today, mm -hmm. you know, next June, It'll still say a hundred, but it's not going to be worth that same. It won't have no, the same purchasing power. The right? buying power is less. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you, you know, you only want to keep that money in an account that you need as cash in case of emergency or for the rent or that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. That's interesting because like the thing with inflation, like it, I, I understand from a theoretical, like you print more money, so the money is worth less. And then it's since it's valued le at less, you can't buy as much with one iteration of that currency. Yeah. But what I don't understand is like if. Everyone can buy less. Like, I feel like it should even out theoretically. Like, if I'm a company and then there's inflation and my dollar is worth less, so to buy my supplies that I need to make whatever thing I'm making, mm -hmm. like, you would buy, like, I almost, 
Well, I guess not because then you'd have to charge more to recoup to recoup the loss of the value of the dollar. So, yeah, and it and it doesn't hit. It'd be one thing if you just changed it overnight. Right, like so, we wake up tomorrow, and the buying power is worth ten percent less, and everybody knows that, right? Like tomorrow, ten dollars is only worth nine. You know, we sent out a decree; everybody knows. But that's not how it hits the market, right? No, they do these long-term deals where it's like I'll buy this much over this much time, and do like put this much up front, and then pay that much on the back end, and whatever else. Yeah, and so it hits different sectors at different times, and so different things are hit by inflation. Right. There's a scenario where inflation's good for you, right? Like if you happen to be on the, um, you know, on the like, on a, um, a fixed debt, right? So like a mortgage, mm-hmm. right? Like a mortgage is, um, it's paid in a dollar amount, right? Regardless yeah. of inflation. So my like, for example, the mortgage on my house every year kind of be sort of in a way becomes less. Mm-hmm you know, in the absence of me paying it off just by running out the clock, all of a sudden the amount that I owe is not as steep to get to. Yeah. The percentage Um, of your paycheck is less that it comes out of. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, it just, it depends what, who's being hit when. Um, But it, yeah, it is interesting. It's interesting just like when you sit down and actually do the math and say, look, I, I need, you know, like this month, right? Like the inflation rate's like 8% year over year. Right. Mm-hmm. So like I need to make 8% to break even like that's nobody's know. nobody. No one that I know has gotten, has gotten a raise to match no. cost of living and inflation. Yeah. No. And that's the kind of thing, right? So like gas prices move up and down every day, salaries get renegotiated annually. Right. So you're, you're going to get the, the worker paycheck is going to get hit a lot harder than something that can move faster, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like, I was playing volleyball the other day and one of the guys that we were playing with was like, did you guys get like a inflation bump or like cost of living like raise? And I was like, no. <laughs> He's like, did you? <laughs> no. Like, oh, good. But everybody's struggling. It's, uh, I don't know. The thing with the gas prices also is weird because this is why I don't, I don't understand I I don't understand exactly what happened because from what it appears to me is like I heard some number the other day on the news that we only have like 40 40 billion dollars worth of trade with Russia or some mm-hmm. some some small some very small number yeah relative to like the rest of our trading and stuff mm-hmm. and so I was like okay so the, the price hikes on gas. So then other people are saying, well, it's like price gouging from the gas companies. It's like, yeah, well, why would, it's like, well, why would they, that doesn't make sense. Cause it's like, why would they do that? Why haven't they just been doing that anyways? Yeah. And then did they do it now? Cause they could blame it on Putin. I was like, I guess in like some far off unit, like, I guess maybe conceivably if you had some like guy in an evil boardroom or whatever doing, like in despicable me then like maybe but i don't so that doesn't make like a whole lot of sense and then like i don't for europe it makes sense because they get most of their oil from russia Mm -hmm. and germany gets like three quarters of it from russia yeah and then but we don't really do that but then we shut down keystone and people are like oh it's gas prices are higher because we shut down keystone and in, in the beginning, that made sense because I was like, well, we'll have to get some oil from Russia. But then it's like, no, only $40 billion of trade goes from the U.S. like between the two countries. So like now that doesn't make any sense anymore. Yeah. And so the only thing left that like just thinking it out in my head now, the only thing left now is that the Middle Eastern countries that are that have the oil realize that because russia is not producing as much because they're at war the demand like the supply is less but the demand is still more so they can kind of like go up a bit is the only thing the only thing that makes sense to me logically there's a lot of illogical things that have happened in the last two years (laughs) but that's the only thing that makes sense to me logically 
in my very quick thought exercise that I just went through, but I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I, I, I have, I'm, I'm curious about it. So I've seen a couple charts about inflation and how gas prices relate to specifically like the war in the Ukraine, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of momentum leading into that moment, right? Like prices mm -hmm. were going up before. Yeah. So I wonder, at least in gas, if we're, we're actually reading into two things, right? Like we're reading into gas, like we said, moves daily, right? Like yeah. it's, it's just, it's something that we're used to the price moving. Whereas like eggs were not, or bread or, you know, like those kind of things, they, they change, they seem to change slower. Well, so I wonder expensive now too. Yeah. So I, I wonder how much of this is gas specific and how much of it is just, we notice gas because it's the leading edge. Mm, right. That's could be that, but also I think the percentage that it went up, like I remember looking at gas, it was like $2 or two fifty, mm -hmm. and now it's doubled. Yeah. Whereas other things haven't doubled. Like it's gone like I don't know. A, well, some stuff has. I noticed that I was buying chicken at the um grocery store the other day, and the last time I looked at the price was like five bucks for like a pound of chicken breast or whatever, and now it's like eight. So I guess that's close to doubling, but it's like right. So what if it's just what if chicken's just dragging two months behind? What if it'll be double in two months? Well then I'm gonna start buying real chickens so. <laughs> it's cheaper to buy a real chicken <laughs> yeah they'll lay eggs but, for me it's fine but you know what i mean like i, I like your thought yeah, exercise it could be it, it's kind of what i do where like where i do too where i'm like well where do we get all our oil from i don't know i've never looked into it but if, it, if no, it's not know. like if we're not getting that much from russia then where is it all coming from? You know, like it, it was sort of the same thing I saw when people were talking about Keystone, where they're like, it's not that much oil. Yeah. Right? Like we're, we're sort of fighting over, you know, 5%. Yeah. Well, I thought under the previous administration, we had got to a point where we were net surplus for energy. I'd heard that too. I, like I said, I never looked into it to follow up, but I'd, I had heard that as well. Yeah. That. And also the previous president said that gas would get to this price if the current one won yeah did you, did you see that compilation that video in his like speeches or whatever during the campaign he was like if the other one gets elected this 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 and this will happen and they've all become true <laughs> yeah I, I haven't seen that now to be fair that guy said a lot of things <laughs> oh i'm no I, somebody probably clipped like the four most reasonable things right. that he said <laughs> right like <laughs> if i just say a bunch of stuff that'll yeah, stick you have to you have to it's like it's like what stephen a smith does shane gillis was like in his special was like trump won every single debate and he never said a fact it's like it's so... <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's a like, funny thing yeah you could never watch a debate the same well, the same way again. He's like, toss out a Trump highlight video and get a six pack, and you're set for the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, this it's funny actually that you say that because we, um, I don't know if you remember, but in the last presidential election, you and I were texting like the last debate, mm -hmm. and and I watched it, and my wife fell asleep, uh -huh. and I remember thinking like I got into it like an hour, and I was like, I don't understand how anybody who doesn't like follow this stuff full time could possibly know who's telling the truth and who's lying. Oh, I have no idea. Right. Like, I mean, it's every other sentence by both of them is it's, made yeah. up. Right? That, like, and then the one in between is the other one is lying. Yes. Right. And so I got to a point that I got up and I threw my ballot in the trash because I was like, I'm not doing this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and then you and I were texting. You were like, well, you know, maybe you should, you know, maybe try to aim for the future. And I was like, fine, Eric, I'll dig it out of the trash. <laughs> So I'll vote third party. Like I'm not, but yeah. like, you know, I actually, I was going to ask you, I have this theory about social mm -hmm. media that this mm -hmm. kind of ties back into, which is, what do you think about this? That a lot of the unrest is coming from the fact that we can now fact check our leaders in real time, right? You can pull up the clip of mm -hmm. whoever at whatever time and say, no, 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 no. You didn't say that. And like, they're not like, I don't think the establishment is used to like people in the crowd being able to be like, but is this you? <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I'd say, yeah, a lot of it is because you're getting all these independent voices of people that have huge followings. Like, this is the one thing that, and I don't know if Charlotte will listen to to this, but when I was talking to her, one of the things that I was going to ask and then didn't was like, she mentioned like, yeah, they might have the numbers on YouTube, but it's the key demographic that counts. It's like, yes, that's true but the numbers aren't close. Like if you look at some of these independent creators on YouTube versus like a CNN or a Fox or like Mm -hmm. an MSNBC, it's like, yes, that's, she was saying like the quality of the audience matters more than the quantity. And I was like, yes. However, the, what I didn't say was the quality of the person that's going to go seek that out on YouTube is also like, like you and I are those people versus like, the ratings on CNN where they just have it on at the airport. Yeah. And nobody's paying attention. And right. Nobody just has a YouTube creator on at the airport. Right. So like, I don't know. I've not done the re like I, that's her field. Sure. Um, and I've not done any of the research on it, but I would say, yeah, they don't know how to deal with these people. Like, because these people are, smart they're driven they can see Mm -hmm. the numbers go up by themselves they've made they've self-made for the most part these like media conglomerates that are starting to rival all the establishment ones in terms of not in terms of like like um capital and like footprint but in Mm -hmm. terms of influence because i don't know anyone my age that watches the news no. But but if if you went on like even like a Philip DeFranco where people are starting the people that I know anyways are starting to be like yeah yeah like even him people know who that is yeah like the people know who Brian Stelter and Tucker are because people on YouTube make fun of them right not right. because they listen to them right for the most part so I think I think long run it'll be good because then right right now they're mad that. I feel like the establishment is upset that they can't get away with stuff. Yeah. But eventually as the new generation comes through, that's not going to be like, a, Oh, we used to be able to get away with stuff and now we can't. And, and it's instead, I think it's going to be like, no, we just have to be more like accountable. Hopefully that's like the optimist in me. And I hope, yeah. I hope that's the case. Yeah. But I don't know. Like these people have been in like Pelosi. There's a, I think there's a picture of Nancy Pelosi with like JFK. Like she's still around. <laughs> yeah. It's like she's still here. Like well, yeah. for what? And then like Dick Cheney, like his daughter is that his daughter Liz? Or is that his yeah. niece uh, or like some one of his some family people? Yeah. yeah. When the Bushes have been in there for forever and the Clintons yeah. have been involved for forever. Like these people are all still here. So it's it's like when are they going to not be here anymore? Or maybe it was Biden was in a picture. I don't know. One of them was in one of the yeah. like I don't know. They're both like 147 years it's old. It's probably like, both, no, like, honestly. They're all like, what's the average age in like in our federal government of the like leadership is like 85 or something. I don't know. Probably if you took probably AOC, Dan Crenshaw, the rest of like the squad of man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you took if you took them for and Dan Crenshaw, you're probably looking at like 70s. Yeah, I would say. Probably, like, like, cause those they'll they bring down the age a lot because they're like late thirties, yeah. early forties, and yeah. well, Tulsi left already. Um, yeah, but I, I do. I I wonder. I mean, I think they're there. I wonder how much of it'll be a, like a demographic turnover as as people age in and out. Because like I like my parents are never gonna watch YouTube. It's just not gonna happen. No. They're not. They. And that's why we could say whatever we want. We're not yeah, getting right? in trouble. We're, <laughs> we're safe over here. Um, <laughs> But like, it's right. Like they want that establishment credential. That's what mm-hmm. makes them feel comfortable. Um, and I think you're what right. Is I that, think, what does that do for you? Having that establishment credential next to their name? I almost instantly don't believe them. Yep. Me too. I'm like default. Don't believe them. Yeah. That's, me too. Yeah. yeah. Be- because there's too much of it, right? Like, it, and it's too easy to get called on it these days, mm-hmm. right? Like it's too e- Like, I mean, you know, it's too easy for somebody to look at the news and go, I don't know about that one. And like you flip through your phone and five seconds later, you're like, oh yeah, no, that wasn't true. That's not what happened. Right. Yeah. That's um, yeah. Here's some dude who was there and he filmed it and it's on TikTok. So no, that's yeah. not true. Right. You know, like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. It's nuts. And that's why like when we're talking about the debates, 
and you have no idea really what's true and what's not because that information you're not privy to a lot right. of it and yeah if, and and if you can find it it has to be through like a FOIA or going through some 800 page government report on whatever and nobody's got time to do that unless right. it's their job and that's right. why these YouTube people who go through those reports and put in all the FOIA requests and do all the rest of it that's why I trust them because they come with receipts yes. they'll be like this is what he said here's where it is in the report where it says XYZ is not the case and yeah. they show you and so that's why there's a shifting of I don't know yeah. media things so it's, it's really weird we're, I feel like we're in a shift and yeah. the other weird part is I feel like Sometimes this is slightly unrelated. I feel like I should have started doing this like five years ago, but also I wasn't ready to start doing this five years ago. So this is a different different issue for a different day. Um, But no, like people say sometimes like, oh, we're in a moment of history right now. And like it becomes kind of a cliche a bit. Yeah. I feel like actually this, the last like, I don't know. We'll say going back to 20, going back to that White House correspondence dinner when Trump got roasted by Seth, uh, Seth Myers, I think, and by Obama. Yeah. Going back <laughs> and, and, and the clip of Trump like staring at them like, I'm going to take your job. It's like, right. <laughs> going that back, the- to, that's the turning, I don't know. That's an arbitrary date, but like 2014, 2015 to whenever we get out of this mess is going to be. It's not going to be like, I'm not saying as we're in the Great Depression, but I'm saying it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be studied as like, as the Great Depression of studies. Like this is a 10 year period where shit got wacky. Yeah. Well, even if you ever watch, um, even if you watch, have you ever watched any of the like congressional hearings on like Bitcoin Recently? or no. Facebook or. Oh, right, yes, like, yes, yes. I saw the one where they didn't know how Google worked. which was, Yeah. Right. It's like watching your grandparents try to figure out a. I don't know how cell phones worked all over yeah. again, but like, they're also regulating it. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's, you know, it, it's wild to watch information, like the information age catch up to a bunch of really old people. Right. Like, yeah. and then, you know, and, and to see how that plays out in terms of sort of social turmoil. And then also, you know, how, how do you really think those people could effectively regulate an industry they don't understand? Well, like, yeah, but there's that, but you could say that about most, like, I don't understand most industries. Like, how do they have the time to, yeah, you know what, we're going to regulate pharmaceuticals, and we're going to regu- regulate food, and we're going to yeah. regulate sports, and we're going to regulate, I don't know, I'm just throwing stuff out there, but like, you don't have the time to know enough about all these things to like, to do that, and that's why they have all these executive agencies, which then aren't accountable to the people because they're not elected yeah and so the other thing that's weird about the like them learning about technology is like you don't think of them in that way generally like when they're up there like people do now because it's Mm -hmm. been like found out but five years ago there was never like oh they're just old people that don't understand everything like the first couple times like those videos came out people were surprised yeah like in a funny way they're like wow this is hilarious and i was like oh my god yeah but, but I think it's but right. It, if you just yeah. think it makes sense. It's like these people are the same age as my grandparents. Why would they know? Right. Well, and it, it, I do think, I mean, I think part of it is this institutional shift, right? Like bringing mm-hmm. it back to that, that theory of CNN was never going to show that. There's just no way. Unless. No, no shot. Unless it, right. unless it unless was they, like, uh, unless it was so, Mitch McConnell, then they were never going to show it. And Fox was never going to show it unless it was Nancy Pelosi. So like. Right. Right. So like they're, they're going to cherry pick what they're going to show. And they're going to show it to their audience, right? Mm-hmm. But like, they also have that institutional cred where people mm-hmm. just go, well, I mean, but they know. And you're like, but did they? Like, look at the video, <laughs> right? Like, so yeah. I do, I think there's an aspect of, of that shakeup that's adding to this moment of chaos of mm-hmm. people just not used to having receipts brought to them by random people. Like, I'm watching a lot of it now in COVID, right? I'm watching a lot of people run screaming away from school closure. No, no, no. Mm. I never said that. No, no, no. I was never part of that. That, nope. I never, Here's I never tweet, dude. Right. It's like right here, buddy. Right. Like we all watched you do it. Yeah. Um, 
so like there's a lot of that where like these people would be experts and they would be brought onto TV. They'd be thrown softball questions and then they would go home and they'd have all the, you know, all the old version of blue checks saying, yeah, 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 no, this person's totally reliable. And nobody's going back and being like, wait, 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 like six months ago, you did this. Yeah. Like this. So I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not as despondent as I used to be. I think that's a lot of the uprest or like the upheaval is people learning like it's clarity in some ways of like, mm -hmm. oh no, this is what's really happening here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think clarity to a certain point is like when I started this two years ago, my mom was like, Are you like she asked she was concerned that I was not understanding what was going on or I was gonna say something about stuff i didn't understand i was like no i don't think you understand like the amount of information that exists now and the ability to cross-reference and check things i was like no i'm sharp like yeah sharp on like things that are going on obviously pre-covid that was was when sure. I, actually yeah, yeah. no it wasn't it was right after covid started that was why but yeah. that was why the conversation because nobody knew anything that was going on because it was like that april or may yeah or whatever so I don't know. It's um, speaking of politicians being connected or not being connected. I don't agree with everything Dan Crenshaw says, nor Tulsi Gabbard, but those two are so well connected in and AOC as well. But Dan Crenshaw is like a podcast. I don't think AOC does, but Tulsi and AOC are on Twitter like all the time mm -hmm. with different messages and like people, they're relatable. Yeah. And then on top of that, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the Libertarian Party at all recently. I s sort of. I saw there was some dust up, and now their tweets have gotten <laughs> they they've taken on a new flavor. Do Let's you put it that want? Way. Do you want to know what happened? Sure. Yeah. Fill so me in. So the Joe Jorgensen era is done. Is it nobody? From what I understand, so Dave Dave Smith. Uh, Larry Sharp and Spike Cohen, who was Joe Jorgensen's vice presidential candidate. Uh, Larry Sharp is running for governor of New York. And then Dave Smith is, he's like, he's a comedian, a good one, but also he's yeah. incredibly politically savvy. Like, I know you know who he is, but like for those listening, he's a very hard person to describe like what he actually is because he yeah. has a political podcast and he's very active politically, but also he's a stand up comedian, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've um, heard he does stand up. <laughs> yeah. And it's good. Yeah. Um, but those three went on, you know who Patrick Bet David is? No. So he runs a company called Value Team, and he was the one that did the last interview with Kobe before he died. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, the last, like, big one. Yeah. Um, so those three go on to Patrick Bet David, and Dave Smith also has a podcast called Part of the Problem. And Joe Jorgensen had gone on that podcast as well and said something about – Dave Smith said that like doing something to like you put 12 drinks in a woman then it's easier to like bring her home but and, but what he actually said was like somebody asked him a question about some guy that whatever and he was like if I was to do that that would be that would make sense why that person did that but that's horrible and he shouldn't do it Something like that. I'm I probably butchered it, but basically when when you like go watch the whole video, what she said, what Jorgensen said that Dave Smith said is entire like not true at all. Yeah. So he felt he was about to not respond on his own podcast, but he did in many ways. So, anyways, they had the national convention for the Libertarian Party a couple of weeks ago. And the Mises Caucus, which is the Dave Smith, Larry Sharp, Spike Cohen wing, basically mm -hmm. swept all the delegates. And so they now control the Twitter, to your point. Uh, but also, uh, that's where the candidate is going to come from for the presidential election in 2024. So hopefully, it'll be, it won't be Larry Sharp because he's running for governor. Yeah. I don't think it'll be Spike. There's rumblings. People want it to be Dave. Yeah. Um, and if he does, and he somehow ends up on the debate stage. That with, would be amazing. With <laughs> Biden and or Trump or whoever. <laughs> he will wipe the floor with all of them. Like Trump is sharp. 
but he's not a comedian. Like there's there's levels to different like Trump is Trump is like he's an animal for yeah. sure. Yeah. But like I don't know. So, I, we'll, I, yeah, so we'll I, see. I think he'd be pretty susceptible to the thing he had going for him was he didn't have a record. Yeah. Now he does. And I think he'd be pretty susceptible to like, like you noted, Dave Smith's pretty savvy, right? And oh, one so, of the, so smart. Yeah. And he's pretty good about picking people off from their usually offside, yeah. right? Like, so he, he could easily attack Joe Biden from the left, mm-hmm. right? And be like, look, you are the architect of, of, you know, the drug war and mass incarceration. That's you. Right. Like yep. you did that. You should yeah. sit down now. Right. Like, I don't want to hear about equity from you, sir. Mm-hmm. And then he could easily go after Trump from the right and be like, hey, Mr. Fiscal Responsibility, you spent all the money, like not just some of it, all the money, <laughs> all of it and more right? like, and yeah. more. Right. Like so like, you know, it, it's not hard to pick these guys apart. And, but... and he's smart enough to do it and savvy enough to do it. And like and and he doesn't have the like. There's no dirt on him. Yeah. Really. I'm sure somebody will make something up. But yeah. Like from a he's got hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of podcasting on YouTube and <laughs> like eight episodes yeah. on Rogan. And I haven't listened to all of them because I don't have time for that. And I don't want to. Like once you once like you kind of know where he stands on things once you listen to him a couple of times. Yeah. So like He's been consistent as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. So they are they are optimistic, they being those three gentlemen I mentioned earlier. Um and I hope something happens, right? Like, but the thing is with the third party, like people always tell me it's a wasted vote or it's a wasted this or a wasted that. It's like well, you threw your ballot in the trash and I convinced you to do it, but like <laughs> You have, I literally threw it in the trash. No, I know, but I'm saying like you have to start with one. Like if everyone's like, no, nah, it's not going to matter. Like if you tell the next person to do it and then they do it and then like you tell the next because they don't need they don't need to get the 50 percent. They just need to get like the 15 percent or 10 percent or whatever it is to get on the ballot, to get on the debate stage. Yeah. Like they don't need they just need a big enough percentage to where the other two parties don't have a majority. Yeah. So they have to work together. That's right. what they need. They don't need 50 percent. They just need to get a sizable enough chunk of things to where they have to be negotiated with and can't be completely discarded. Yeah. I don't, I don't think people understand that. Like they're like, they'll never win. It's like, they don't have to win. Yeah. They just have to get, they just have to get enough to make ever to make other people notice. Yeah. Like there, yeah. Yeah. I think there's some aspect, there's some advantage to using it as a platform. Yeah. Like, like you said, I like, I can already hear the arguments in my head. This is the most important election of our life. Why yeah, they said away? that last time and the time before that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just I'm just forwarding it. It's this one and then the one after that and the one after that are all slated as the most important elections yep, of our life. And I will vote third party in all of them, <laughs> probably. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know who I'll vote for. People listening that don't know who I vote for. I don't know. No, I think probably people know that I vote for third party. But I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I'd be open. I just I the thing the thing that gets me every time, and I I, I think this gets back to the institutional thing. Mm. And kind of what we were talking about earlier with like with habits is that I find people people have had opinions dropped in their head and they don't realize it until you point it out to them. Yeah. Right. Like like this is what sort of lands me on third like on third parties is typically I go, right, but but team red believes these things until they don't, and then team blue believes these things until they don't, and they don't like you know what I mean? Like they've got these logical inconsistencies built in Mm -hmm. and, and people don't even realize that the programming has gone awry until you kind of point out to them. Right. Like, so one example I had on, on the team red side, right. Was I was having this discussion over the summer. I don't remember with who, but they were kind of staunch Republicans. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and we were talking about the, like the all lives matter back the blue side of things. Right. And I said, well, who do you think kept you locked in your house? It wasn't the politicians. Like, I don't care what, you know, what, you know, I'm up in Massachusetts. I don't care what Charlie Baker thinks. He's one dude. Yeah. He's not the one who's going to come to my house, right? Like that's, 
you know, so it was one of like, so then you can sort of see some wheels turn on people, right? So I feel like people go one of two ways. They either double down and they ignore the cognitive dissonance that goes from back the police, they have really hard jobs to also they're the ones enforcing all these things I think are unconstitutional, right? Like they sort of skip over it or you watch the wheels turn where they go, huh? Like these two things were dropped in my head. They're oil and water. They don't mix, right? Like you can't hold both of these at the same time. Um, It works, but that's like, for me, I think, I don't know, maybe four or so years ago, four to six years ago, it became very obvious to me. And it has led me to no end of frustration because I like will pound my head against the wall. Like, why do people not like, like the example that you just gave? Yeah. <laughs> but it's so obvious. It's like, you can't have, it's like, okay, you like team, team, I'll, I'll, I'll use two examples, right? So I'm not biased. Team Blue wants there to be universal health care, but also they think that the government is bad. So you want the government that you think is bad to be in charge of people's health? Right. Yeah. During good the Trump one. years. Right. Yeah. yeah right. Good like one. Dude. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then you go to the other side and then you can say like, okay, well, to take the one that you just made and kind of broaden it a bit, it's like, well, you want, um, like you want smaller government, but then you also think that we need to increase the defense budget. Right. Who, who's, who's the defense budget, bigger government. Okay. So what are you doing? What, like, it's like, well, people need, well, we need national security. So, okay. So you, so you just want, you just want bigger of that, but then not the rest of it. Right. Like like, just specifically this one thing. Just that. Yeah. Just that one thing. It's like socialism, socialism is bad. It's like, well, you want your mail. (laughs) Right. Like, yeah. So it's, I don't know. And I, this is going to be the episode that somebody's going to comment on. I hope somebody comments. Nobody ever comments. I actually want feedback on these things, by the way, people. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> this will be the one that people comment on. Like, no, mail is not socialist. It's actually, <laughs> or the government is bad because the Republicans are in. So that somebody else would do better. Like, yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. That. Yeah. If only we had all angels, then it wouldn't be a problem. I know. So that's where I was texting you about human nature. It's like, that's where we get into this thing where it's like, yes, everything would run great if everyone cared about everyone else and everyone looked after each other and we could have like socialized this and free college and sure and yeah. no war ever. It's like, no. So then on the, the red side, right, there are people that are horrible people in the world. We should yes. probably defend ourselves. So, okay, fair enough. Also, there are bad people who are in government. So you want to give them more money to build weapons. That right. Then they're going to do what with? Right. Defend us, but also bomb other people. And then it's like, and yeah. this is where I'll get in trouble with work, probably. That's <laughs> well, but know. like, but right, like take, I mean, I think uh, to your point, right? I, I find- This is philosophical- rhetorical thought exercises yeah for, for the record yes work but like I, I think you like right like i i find that people are the thing that drives me toward like you said is 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 this idea of consistency right so i i can find things that i agree with people on both sides of right so like mm-hmm. when i go and talk to my friends who are on team blue and i'm like man monsanto that is crazy right like you know, like they mess with people's health in a really serious way. They deserve, they need to be oversight. Companies do need oversight, right? Like they're mm-hmm. made of people. Their intent is, is shareholder equity and profit. That's what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. You should remember that, right? Like when you talk to the, the guy at the Apple store, he wants to sell you an iPhone. That's what he wants to do. He's going to pretend he's your friend. He's not your friend. He doesn't know who you are. He doesn't care. He's going to sell you the iPhone, right? Yeah. And you then... But I was like, but then I want you to take that same eye and I want you to turn it on the IRS, right? Like, that's what I want. I want you to realize that they're people and they're people who have power and authority over you and they're going to use it like people do, right? Like what, you know, if I asked somebody on team blue, what would happen if I, if Apple could just make you buy an iPhone, what would they do? Oh, well, they can't do that because monopolies and 
whatever. Right. Now, what if, right, like, but what if you just granted somebody the ability to reach into your bank account and take whatever they wanted for their thing? Oh, well, you know, we just have to pay our fair share. Right. Like, I'm like, I just want, just, I, well, you know, so when, when people on Team Red say like, man, that IRS, you really got to keep an eye on them, but probably don't have to regulate companies so much. I'm like, no, no, no. It's just people. They're just people. Yeah. They've chosen a place to be and people do people things, right? Like they act typically in their own best interest for the most part. And so you need to set up a system. At least I find, I feel like you, we should have to set up a system that balances my best interest and your best interests, right? Like that's how we interact. But let's not pretend that we're going to find a whole bunch of angels and put them in one specific thing. There are yeah. only angels in industry. There are only angels at the Department of Defense. Yeah. No, there's just people, right? It's, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the, the the other thing, so I'll redeem myself with the defense stuff and then I'll get off it because, but they're like the people that are in there for the most part, like especially the ones that have served, mm -hmm. it's like they work hard and they want the, because their job, they they want to get the equipment to the people that need it yeah. in a fast yeah. and timely manner. And it's it's like the bureaucracy around the, like the top of capital, like the capital and all the rest of the stuff where it's like, that's where it gets the, the issues lie. But yeah, no, you're, you're yeah. And that's why I'm like, you, you might as well just vote third party just so they have to just so, just so there's another, another thing that doesn't allow the humans to have like, it's another roadblock almost for them to be, yeah. for not to do whatever they want is basically how I view it. Right. To, to a certain extent, it's like if we get 15% of the Libertarian Party in there, and then it's like, what would the math be? I don't know, 43 and 42. Yeah, 43 and 42%, and then nobody has 50. Like, that's fine. That's what I want. Yeah. I don't, I don't. Well, I, don't I just know. want, yeah, like you said, the that. Libertarian Party is humans as well. It's like, I'm, sure. I don't want yeah, them yeah. to like monopolize and sweep everything. Like, although I think that their ideas on things are better, but mm. they're still people. So yeah. it's not like and, they're all angels either. No. And, and like, you know, whether they would implement them as they, they suggest that they would is a different thing than when you do it, right? Like it's, it's one thing to be campaigning and it's another thing to be in the hot seat. So, yeah. you know, I, I, like, I do think you have to give some, some leeway there, but yeah, I, I find it odd that people are, I feel like people are being sort of programmed and they don't realize it, right? Like they don't realize, like, and then if you sit them down and you go, Hey, what about this? Like you can sort of watch people's heads explode. Mm -hmm. um, That's fun. I enjoy that. Okay, <laughs> right. Like, like a, another one I enjoy this one I find is particularly good for like the, the police COVID one is a good combo for team red. If anybody oh. wants a good one for team blue, this is a good one. So you, you point out somehow, you know, usually kindly, because you, you don't want to come across angry. No, you course. just want to watch yeah. the wheel spin. Because if you get people mad, then the then, defenses just go up. Yeah. That's it. So, but you just point out that there is the simultaneous claim that the police are, have real racial discrimination problems, right? And in their application of force. And also only the police should have guns. Right. Yeah. Right. Like play this one out yeah. for me. Right. Like, okay. Yes. I like, okay. Just yeah, and then watch, one. right. Like that's watch how one. it sort of spins and you go, how did I get here? Yeah. Right. Like how, how do I even get to that, that set of beliefs that again, they're oil and water. They don't mix. Yeah. Yeah. Shane Gillis had another good one in his special about like, cause he's from central Pennsylvania. So he's like, my uncles on Twitter were like, and then he's got his friends from Brooklyn. He was like, on, go on Twitter to be like, I'm not racist. Like, that's it. Like, all right. <laughs> like, what? Like, and then he'd be like, all right. <laughs> and, then, and then like the other ones were like, eh, sh share this, share this, share this tweet. If you like the police, like Colin Kaepernick better stand up. <laughs> he goes, share. <laughs> he goes, share if you're not gay. And he's like, no, I'll share. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, <"Oof." laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. No, nah, he, but yeah, it's like, that's, that's all social media turned into. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Just watch it to just watch it go in that way to like every time something popped up to then just see the slew of tweets and Instagram stories that basically were just repeating the same two talking points from either side. Yeah. Like, and it's like, well, this was predictable again. It's like, did you even think about this? Like, no, you didn't. You just click share for yeah. what? Like, why are you like, why are you doing that? Right. Like, think about it. And then, then you get into like, I had some co- like decent conversations, but like the emotional energy it takes to do that and to really get through to somebody that's stuck either side. Yeah. 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 It's so difficult. Like when the Rittenhouse thing happened, I had a day long conversation with my friend. And if you're listening, you know who you are. Um, <laughs> no, in a good way. He's a really close friend. Um, yeah. And we let it go that night. Basically like he was like, yeah, I see what you're saying, but he, but this, but that, but this, but that. And I was like, okay, but like I've act genuinely spent like from 9 a.m. to like 9 p.m. texting you like paragraphs. Like we've texted back and forth paragraphs. Yeah. And the next day he texted me. He was like, dude, I had no idea the media misrepresented this case so much. Like, thanks for talking to me about it. And I was yeah. like, happy. But I was also like, dude, it was just a day of my life. Like, yeah, like, that's a lot. And you like, you can't like, you have other other responsibilities, and so it's yeah. really hard like to see those situations happen. And like, you want it, like you want, like I want to talk to people, and like I don't even, they don't even have to agree with me. I just want like to think, just think, because yeah. at the because at the end of the day, both of these are kind of the same. Team Red and Team Blue, basically, at the end of the day, they just say stuff. But like, there's cognitive dissonance because they don't care. They're in it for the same things. Yeah, both of them. And so then it goes back to why would you not vote third party again? Yeah, that's and that's the conclusion I come to all the time, and that's why I will do it. (laughs) Right, it's fair. Well, it's like it makes no difference. Well, and and I hope too that I do find at the very least the long form interviews it's a lot harder to stick to talking points. So I do, I get possible. I, I, yeah. So I, I feel like I do have hope for kind of um, us being in a transition period, right? Like, I feel like there's a lot of people who, I mean, for lack of a better word, let's just call them boomers, right? They're not coming over here, right? Like they're no. not going to watch a two hour interview with whoever, right? They're going to listen to maybe 10 minutes and eight of that is going to be yelling at each other, right? Yeah. Like, you know, we're going to be doing the wait, 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 just listen, wait, wait, right? Like, what are we doing? This is a waste of everybody's time. Yeah. Like, you know, let's just get some like, um, you know, those like blow up comical boxing gloves. Let's just do that and let yeah. them like duke it out. And that'll at least be enjoyable. Yeah. Put it in a ring. Yeah. Like, let's just do that. Cause at least then I'll enjoy these 10 minutes yeah. and learn who has a good hook. Like, yeah. You know. yeah, I mean that's what the cable stuff is now. You put five guys on a panel, and they just yell at each other. Just give them all rock 'em sock 'em gloves. And call yeah, it, call it a just day. call it a day, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I even listened to the other day. Um, I, um, I don't remember why. I, I was, oh, my phone had died, right? Mm-hmm. So I didn't have like podcasts or books to listen to. So I was flipping through the radio, right? Yeah. And I landed on on NPR. And I was uh-huh. like, well, NPR, like, let's see what's going on in NPR, right? And they had, um, they had Ibram X. Kennedy on, right? Yeah. And they, it was the same thing where I was like, I mean, you talked to him for like six minutes. And like, you just threw him softball questions, right? Like, some people think you're a racist. Are you a racist? Yeah. Right? Like, and, and I'm like. He just gives his answer from the book. Right. It's like, like and it's, just, it's a copy and paste interview every time. Yeah, it's copy and paste. I was like, this guy has some ideas. Let's talk about them, right? I'm sure he could talk to you for an hour. Dig in. Find you know, out like- you, you could talk to him for an hour if you just let him talk, but you challenged. Like yeah. a lot of these people, if you challenged, then you couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Like they wouldn't be able to do it. Well, and I, I find too, like you can tell when somebody's just speaking in platitudes. 
Mm -hmm. right? You're like, give yeah. me some examples. Like that's give me something concrete. Let's talk, you know, let's, let's hash out how this would play out in a real scenario. Well, that happened on Tim Pool's show a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if we talked about this, like just amongst ourselves or not, but some, some guy, oh, what was his name? He had like curly hair. Um, looks like, I don't even know. Wait, he's left Twitch personality or whatever. And he goes okay. to Tim Pool's show. And he calls Tim Pool right wing, like in the beginning, which is hilarious. <laughs> and Tim immediately is like, on what views? Yeah. And he and he had doesn't have an answer. He doesn't know. He was like, Well, I think you said this about one thing. And yeah. He was like, no, I feel this way about this. I feel this way about that. I feel like this way about that. And like, yeah. I'm not going to quote what he said because like, it's not like, if you want to go listen to it, go listen to it. Um, yeah. People, people listening. Um, he was like, well, you, you like guns. So you're right wing. It's like, yeah. Okay. What about every single other issue? He's like, I'd be for like socialized healthcare. I'm pro choice. I'm pro like go down the list. He was like, well, I guess. You're not really right wing. It's like, yeah. Did you think before you spoke? It's like, right. no, you didn't. No. You just said a thing. And yeah. then later in the show, they like pull up some poll and he was like, well, that guy is associated with the alt right. And then they're like, okay, let's go find out. And they Google and it's like, no, he's not. Right. Like it, this, this was dropped in that guy's head, right? Like this yeah. is an opinion that somebody somewhere dropped in his head. He didn't even realize it. No. That Right, but he had no data to back it up. No. And it's wild to see that like play out in real time, right? Like to see it's it's astonishing actually. Because yeah. when they try to like they say it with such like people say things with such conviction. And then to have somebody look it up right there and be like, uh incorrect, sir or ma'am. Right. Right. Uh, it's it's weird because and then and then you have to see how they take it if they double down on it. Yes. Like, no, well, I heard, and then that just gets like it's it's almost embarrassing. It is embarrassing at that point. And yeah. then and then to see people like be like, oh, I don't yeah, I don't know. Like maybe. And then that's weird. Right. Like because you're supposed to come on the show with your ideas to like have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And then when you like your idea is in a is a balloon and it gets popped immediately. Then it's like, what are we doing on the show? It's like, you're, you don't have any ideas. And then it's just whoever that person is talking at the other yeah. person because they have no actual ideas. They just yeah. have what they heard from somebody. And then that just gets, that just gets really weird. And so then we don't, then we're left with no policy, actual policy debate. There's right. no, I have not seen a true policy debate probably since McCain Obama, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't really remember it, honestly. Or, or Romney Obama? I think it would have had to have been one of those. Yeah. Because that, Trump was after that. Yeah. I don't think I've seen a real, an actual policy debate. Yeah, dude, I have no idea. Yeah. Well, and like, and one with at least some nuance. Yeah. Right? Like, it's, I mean. I like most a real of these, one, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, most of the issues that were like, you know, people are fighting tooth and nail on. They have some gray area, all right? Like other people, right? like they, they all involve people. people. Yeah. So, like, you know, why can't we just talk to each other like adults? Like, I don't understand. Like, this isn't helpful, but it it is weird. Like you said, it's weird to watch people see something unravel. And like, you know, it's one of those things where I want to watch. Like, it's one of those things that I wish. I occasionally wish I did sociology. Because I want to, or like psychology, and be like, I want to walk through that. Like, I want to to talk to that person in a neutral thing, and be like, what's going on in your head right now? Yeah, I need like, to get, I need to get either a person in either of those disciplines on. Yeah. So if people listening know people, probably, if I had to guess, I would say there's three three accounts that have made it to this point, and they're all my own. <laughs> <laughs> no but like no i totally understand what you're saying i also want to be like i would also like to know that because it looks like they just got hit in the head with a baseball bat most of the time yeah like on their face you can see it on their face right 
It's very odd. Yeah, it's it's an interesting, and and I you know it yeah it's an interesting phenomenon, and I wonder how much of our, you know, like I said, how much of our legacy establishment exists because they're really good at dropping opinions in people's heads, and like it probably and, know, and people mostly, are busy. Yeah, they don't have time to like research stuff. But again, yeah. that's why we talked about earlier. This that's why the YouTube people are making making a mark because they'll be like, no, incorrect. I did the research for you. Here you go. Right. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. The last thing I want to talk to you actually about is human nature also, but in comedians. Like when I went to Austin. Yeah. Um, dude, these comedians are like borderline homeless, all of them. Like, yes. Or drug yeah. addicts or like these are not well people. No. Generally. And I didn't really realize that until – like I knew it kind of knew it before Austin, like before I went. Yeah. But then we were there and we saw one of them, like to see them up close. Cause we were in probably like three rows back at some, so we went to see the first show and then we were outside, like at the bar and a couple of the local comedians were going to go on afterwards and they invited us to stay. Yeah. And so we stayed and we talked to a couple of them and we're, I was just like, these people are wearing clothes that don't fit dude hasn't had a haircut <laughs> like dude dude hasn't had a haircut in like months like like did you brush your teeth today man it's like right nah but he's got a cigarette and he's drinking and he's hilarious yeah and i'm like is this the place for people like you? <laughs> like, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I didn't. I didn't realize. I didn't realize because the the super famous ones that you see, like the Kevin Hart's of the world and the the Gabriel Iglesias of the world and the like, the Joe Rogans of the world and the Chappelles of the world, like they all seem normal for the most part. Like, because they have like when you're in that sort of crowd, like you have to be presentable. Yeah, sure. Um, but like once you get a couple rungs below that it's like i don't like all the local ones there was like there was one local one that i saw we like snuck into this gold's gym and like paid ten dollars but like kept the guest pass and like so we went there like all the days that we were there (laughs) and i saw one there and i was like that's the only one that like seems like he's not just a broken person yeah 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 and that was very interesting to me yeah, it is. It seems like there's some overlap between, I don't know, it's it's creativity and some sort of weird neurotic behavior that like is not like I, I sort of wonder if it if it takes a certain brain chemistry to see the world in a way that comedians see it, right? Like they sort of have to notice things that are funny but obvious. The rest of yeah. us don't know how to pin down until somebody points it out. Yeah um so like you know i don't know is there like is their brain just slightly out of frame and that makes it hard to exist but it also lets them see into stuff i don't don't know know. i'd have to ask i I want i should talk to nathan the comedian that i had on the podcast i should talk to him about it because he seems like he's got his life together for the most part well he was doing like a corporate job and but like he started doing comedy when he was in high school and like did it through college a bit and then he like got his normal job yeah, And then he was doing his normal job and he was doing some gigs and like some other stuff. And then he finally just quit his job and to do comedy full time. So he had to be presentable for like, so he's not like that. Yeah. Um, it was also weird because all the people who are like that are also, they're not funny, mostly. Yeah. Like there's a handful, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, it just seems like a majority of the local ones that don't make it are that way. And like, that's, that was, that's what's weird to me is like, because if you go to like a local live music place, mm-hmm. like in your town or whatever, the local one, like the local musicians seem to have their like lives together for the most part. That's true. That's true. Um, but there's something about comedians where it's like, no, they're just yeah. like, I don't know. It's very, The reason I thought about it is because we were going down 6th Street in Austin, uh, Mm -hmm. Taryn and I. And we saw a guy that hosted the show the night before just out, like, smoking a cigarette outside one of the bars. And we went up to him and said, like, hi. 
We were like, oh, how is it inside? He was like, I don't know. I live here. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I yeah. live in a room upstairs above a bar on 6th Street in downtown Austin. Yeah. Like, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Taryn and I both looked at each other. And we were like, what do you mean you live in a room in a bar? Like, you know? <laughs> right. Like, who, like, how did you even get here? Right? Like, how yeah. do you even land in that scenario where that's an option? Yeah. No idea. Yeah. No, and I, and I do think you're right. I mean, I, I, it's funny that you brought it up because I, I was listening the other day. Have you ever uh, listened to any of Andrew Heaton stuff? No. So he does like a mixture of comedy slash like politics. Like he does a, he does like a series of three podcasts that I enjoy. So one's the political mm -hmm. orphanage, which is like a politics one where he, he does kind of what we've been talking about where he does deep dives into stuff and like mm -hmm. walks through a topic for an hour and like reads whatever, you know, whatever Supreme court cases, he reads the opinions and then summarizes them. And like he does all the work, but then he also does one called alienating the audience where mm. he's just talking about sci-fi with like his friends. <laughs> so like that's one. And then he does like a, um, what's the last one? Friday release valve where he finds like the weirdest headlines he can and like just reports on the weirdest stories he can. So like, it's a weird mix of, of, of personalities, mm -hmm. but he was doing one on, on, um, on gun laws. And then he went into this discussion where he said, like he was talking about it as an example that he had bought a gun. Yeah, and then later on in the t in the thing, he says he gave it away, and he and then he kind of talks about it. he's like I gave it away because I'm sort of bipolar, right? And I didn't want there to be a weapon in my house because there's a decent chance that it would end poorly for me. And I was like, I mean, you just sort of plopped that out there, that like you know I'm yeah. a comedian, I'm pretty funny. Also, suicide it's on the table, not right now, but like maybe tomorrow, right? Like it's a weird. Yeah. Right, like he's a pretty funny guy, and he seems upbeat and happy. But like to to know that that's in your closet of like, yeah. Also, I get really depressed sometimes. Yeah, and how that would interplay, and like you said, like I mean, day to day function, right? Like you know. Yeah. I don't know, but it does. You're right. I mean, it does seem to run through that community. It's really weird. Like that. Like they're all like that. Yeah. And then the ones who are presentable get made fun of for being presentable, the local ones. But, like, the famous ones don't get made fun of. Like, there was a guy that went up, <laughs> and Tony told him he looked like <laughs> Tony told him he looked like Donald Trump's campaign manager. And <laughs> as, like, he was presentable, and he was pretty funny. But, yeah. like, then the next guy that goes up is like, yeah, I moved here last week. I was doing meth, and now I left Florida. It's like, where are you living? in my van yeah like this guy is on stage and right. then a guy wearing a cape and one glove went up what yeah and he did this weird thing where he was like oh i'm out of battery and he like fell over at the end of his minute and tara and i were like what are we watching right now like why <laughs> keep it keep in mind by the way that this is not a big place there's like yeah. a couple hundred people in here, and we had tickets very close to the stage. Shout out Matt Muling, uh, episode 51, great guitarist. He got us tickets to the show, and we were yeah. very close to the stage. Like, like the stage is like this, and we were like off to the side, and it was just the aisle way, and then us. Yeah. And we were against the wall with, with like the other musical artists because they have a live band, and then they have a live band for the after party afterwards. So we were sitting with the live band that was going to play afterwards. Yeah. Which was cool anyways. But like we were really close. And this dude is like he, he went like this. He's wearing his cape and like one glove, like, but with the fingers cut off. So it was like it wasn't quite Michael Jackson. And the minute goes and he goes, mm. he just falls over on the stage. <laughs> what? And, and and Tony goes, What the fuck? <laughs> but I'm like, did you think that would work? Right, like I, I mean, I guess so. Right, he committed to it. Yeah, but he's been doing it for three years at open mics, is what he said on in the interview part. Yeah. Did it and work any like, of the three years <laughs> leading that's up? That's what I. I guess it had to, but like yeah. it worked for open mics. The only people that are at open mics are the other local comedians, so it yeah. worked for the other nutty people. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, dude. I don't know. It's very strange. Like, I don't. Oh, dude, it was so. It was just like it was surreal. It was like watching. It was like watching that kid in elementary school that thinks he's an anime character like get bullied. Yeah. <laughs> but he, but he was like twenty five. Yeah. Or like thirty. It's like, what do you do with those people in society generally? It's like, it, like yeah. that don't like. Where do you put them? Or like you not even you're like where do they put themselves? I guess yeah. Like, not that it's our decision to put them anywhere, but like, what do you like? What does a guy that runs around with a cape when he's thirty do? Like, is he gonna find a wife and have a family, or is he gonna find like a job? Do you think he's gonna go into a de- like corporate job and run run around with a cape and a tie and like pretend <laughs> yeah, to be yeah. Clark Kent? Like, no. Right. And I'm sure he's a very nice person. I don't sure. yeah, yeah. like, but just to use that as an example of like, people are wacky. <laughs> well, and do you think the successful comedians, um, I mean, either hide it or hire enough people around them to, you know, like whose people, whose job it is to make them function? I think they learn how to channel it. Most of yeah. them, they yeah. learn how to channel it into something um better or they don't have it like andrew schultz doesn't strike me as that type of person yeah um somebody like ari shafir he's wacky for sure yeah but he like his niche audience is like is borderline like the jackass like steve-o audience where that's what they like yeah like crazy stuff and there's only a certain amount of room for people like that in the entertainment like business i feel like yeah. And he's taken one of the slot like for like, him and Shane and Mark went on Rogan like two days ago and he tried to keep up drinking Bud Lights with Shane. Shane is like six three or six four, like two hundred some pounds. Like all he drinks is Bud Lights. And <laughs> at the end, at the last ten minutes of the podcast, they kept it going because they're all fucked up. But they kept yeah. it going. He is on the floor puking into a cooler while the podcast is going and i watched it on the video and he just passed out and they're like ha ari and he's like fuck off on the <laughs> ground but you hear him throw up and they're like oh yeah this is this is even more fun we should keep this in and it's like so the other three are all comedians and they're like lol that's hilarious because right. that's where their brain's at but it's not so far gone that they're the guy puking in the bucket if right, that makes like, sense. Yeah, they so bring like, it in just there, enough. It's yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. Just enough to where like normal people aren't like, Ugh. but like, yeah. it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. I mean, maybe it's the balance, right? It's like it's having just enough that you can function. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a good spot to end where we have just enough of whatever we need to function. <laughs> it's a good quote. <laughs> You need yeah. just enough to function. All right, guys. Hopefully, you guys have listened to just enough of this podcast to function. We will see you guys next time. Peace. See ya.